Okay, so today we are going to talk about absolute value inequalities. We're going to learn how to solve an absolute value inequality and how to graph the solutions to an absolute value inequality. So to solve an absolute value inequality, we're going to get again, like an absolute value equation, get the absolute value symbol alone, and then we're going to write two inequalities. But the one where we negate the side without the symbols, we're going to flip the order symbol. So here I would add 10 to both sides. So I would get the absolute value of 7b is less than 21. And then I'm going to write two inequalities. 7b is less than 21 and 7b is greater than 21, and we, negative 21. So notice that we negated the constant, and then we flipped the order symbol. So just divide both sides by 7, and we're going to get b is less than 3. And then we're going to divide by 7 again, and we're going to get b is greater than negative 3. So when I go to graph this, my b is greater than negative 3 is going to be everything going in this direction. Okay. My b is less than, negative, uh, less than 3 is going to be everything here. Now our solution is where they overlap. Okay, so my solution is actually going to be everything in here, which is where they overlap. So both things have to be true in order for this to be a solution. So when we write our solution, we have to write it as either an and in between, okay, or we can write it as one inequality compound with the smallest number first. So negative 3 is less than b, which is less than 3. I like this method because it's just like the graph. Here's negative 3, here's my x values from here to here, and here's my positive 3. So x is between negative 3 and 3. So if you remember it back to geometry, when you had an AND statement, both things had to be true when you were looking at truth values. All right, <clears throat> let's solve and graph this one. And I'm actually going to change this to or equal to. Okay, So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. And I'm going to get negative B plus 3 is greater than 3. I've got my absolute value symbols alone, so I'm going to write two inequalities. Negative b plus 3 is greater than 3, and negative b plus 3 is less than negative 3. Over here, if I subtract 3 from both sides, I'm going to get negative b is greater than 0. And because of this negative sign, we have to divide by negative 1 and we flip the order sign, so b is less than 0. On this side, if I subtract 3, I'm going to get negative b is less than negative 6. Okay. And then if I divide by negative 1, I'm going to get b is greater than, we have to flip the order symbol, 6. So now when I graph, I've got, and it was equal to, I added that underneath, sorry. You always want to double check that. I forget all the time, and I have to go back and double check. All right, so I'm going to get a closed circle on 6, and it's greater than, so we're going to go in that direction, a closed circle on 0, and it's less than or equal to, so we're going to go this way. When we write the solution, this is an OR statement. You have to write two inequalities 
with the word or between them. So B is less than or equal to zero or B is greater than or equal to six. Okay, there is no way that a solution to this can be both less than six and greater, or I'm sorry, less than zero and greater than six. Okay. So this is an or. Only one thing has to be true in order for it to be a solution. Okay. All right, let's graph this, solve and graph. Remember, we can't distribute, right? We have to divide. So I'm going to divide by 2, and I'm going to get the absolute value of 4x plus 8 is greater than negative 6. Remember that by definition, absolute value is always positive. So a positive number greater than negative 6 is always, always going to be true. Okay? So this means that this is all real numbers. So when we would graph it, it would be the whole thing. I want you to think about what happens if the sign was flipped. What if it was a positive number less than or equal to a negative number, whatever it might be, okay? So the absolute value of a positive number less than or equal to negative a. Will that ever happen? I don't think so, right? So this, if you would get the absolute value of something less than negative a would be no solution or the empty set, however you want to write that. And I don't care <laughs> how you write that for my class purposes. <laughs> All right. So now I want to write an absolute value inequality for the following graph. So the first thing you do is you want to find the distance between your two points. So my distance, if you remember back from geometry, is just 12 minus negative 8 or 20. Okay, so that's the good old ruler postulate. Okay. And then I want to find the midpoint. So what would be the point exactly in between? So half our distance would be 10. So I can either count 10 above or 10 below, and that will give me our midpoint. So halfway, so 12 minus 10 is 2. Negative 8 plus 10 is 2. So this is our midpoint of 2. You can also find it by doing, well, just adding would be fine. All right, so our midpoint is 2. Now our standard of doing this is the absolute value of x minus the midpoint and whatever your symbol is, your order symbol, Okay, and e, half the distance. So what do I mean by that? So my midpoint, absolute value of x minus 2. Now look at this. We're going to be going away from our midpoint. Okay, so our distances are greater than whatever this value is here. So their distance from our midpoint is greater than or equal to, because it's colored in, half of our distance, which is 10. Okay. So absolute value is distance from a point. It's 10. It's 10, but our graph shows it's greater than or equal to that. So that's how we got that equation. Okay. So again, let's find the distance. Or let's find half the distance, actually, we could find. Okay. So 1 half, 9 minus 3 is 1 half of 6 or 3. 
okay? So our midpoint then is going to be right here, three units from each point. So our midpoint is six. So our inequality is the absolute value of x minus the midpoint, which is six. Now this time, all of our distances, because this is three and three, are going to be less than or equal to three. Okay, so everything in my solution is less than or equal to three points from six. So less than or equal to three. Okay. So I want you to think about how you know whether the graph is an and or an or whether it's greater than or equal to. And tomorrow we're going to put that all into a consent, a thought. So hopefully today you learned how to solve absolute value inequalities and then how to write absolute value inequalities. Have a math-tastic day.